Hello, my name is Kelsey and welcome to Becoming Home. In this episode, I'm going to show you how I replaced some vinyl flooring in my home. This is a project I hesitated about tackling because I didn't want it to look cheap or poorly done. But you don't know if you can do something until you try, so I went for it. Although the craftsmanship isn't perfect, it looks miles better than it did before. Let me show you what I did. Here are some before shots of the floor. This is a small section of flooring in my living room that leads to the back patio. When we moved in, the flooring was intact. It was a sort of paper vinyl material and had a white tiled pattern on it. But when we got puppies, they found a loose corner or something and tore up a large section of it. Here are the culprits now. Because it kept catching on the patio door, we went ahead and tore off the rest of the vinyl. You can see it left behind some paper residue, glue and detritus. There are also holes in the concrete and the wood sill on the door frame is not straight so I'll have to work around that. To remove the paper residue and glue, I'm using boiling water and a four inch scraper. On a previous occasion, I tried to remove the paper using water and a scrubbing brush, and it didn't work at all. So while reading tutorials, I thought there's no way just hot water and a scraper is going to cut it. So I went to Lowe's and brought a chemical solvent with all sorts of warnings on it. Highly flammable, dangerous, toxic. When I got home, I thought, before I open this whole can of toxic mess, let me just try this boiling water method. And astoundingly, it worked. The key is, keep your water really hot. I took plenty of breaks to reboil the water in my kettle. If you don't, you're just making extra work for yourself with fruitless scraping. Now that I've got all the paper residue off, there's still a lot of dried glue. I'm using the same boiling water and scraper method. As you can see, this concrete section backs up to carpet which I don't want to get too wet. During the first clip, the paper soaked up a lot of the water I was pouring onto the floor. Now that it's just glue, there's a lot of excess water, so I would suggest having a mop and bucket ready to soak up that excess liquid every once in a while. When I was working around the edge of the carpet, I poured the water directly onto the glue, then scraped it away towards the middle of the concrete. This kept the carpet from soaking up the excess. Yes, this method was messy and you pour a lot of water onto your floor. But when I think about the process of using the solvent, that would have been so much worse. Having to wear gloves, eye protection, keeping the puppies away, keeping the area well ventilated, the strong smell and then the cleanup. Oh my goodness. When I finished with the hot water method, I just mopped up, rinsed all my tools and I was done. Cleaning up after the solvent would not have been fun and would have been a lot more work. Once I was done scraping, I went over the floor one more time with hot water and a wire stripping pad. Then I mopped everything up and left it to dry. My next goal is to fill up all the holes in the concrete. First, I'm loosening any debris and remaining residue with a dry scrubbing brush and sweeping it off the floor. There are a couple of different ways you can fill in holes, but I had some putty left over from a previous project, so I'm using that. I'm kneading the putty till it's malleable, then pressing it into the holes, then using my scraper to remove the excess and level it to the floor. It worked pretty well in my opinion and used up something I already had on hand, so that was a bonus. I'm sure there are more knowledgeable people than me out there who could have told me a better way to do it, so go ahead and comment so I can learn for my next project. I let the putty dry for a full day before I continued. My replacement flooring is this box of self-adhesive vinyl floor tiles that I ordered off Amazon. Before I started to install them, I vacuumed the floor to get rid of any remaining dirt, debris and excess dust. As much as possible, I want the tiles to stick and stay stuck. Before installing the first square, I laid out a couple of tiles and determined my plan of attack. Which direction should the planks run? What would my pattern be? Where was the best spot for my first tile? And then, I went for it. I found the self-adhesive very easy to use and install. Just peel off the paper backing, position the tile, and press down. I used a variety of different tools to conquer the tiles I had to cut down to size. For the straight cuts, I used a ruler and an X-Acto knife. When I scored along the ruler, I could then snap the vinyl square along that line. For the contours, I used paper to make a pattern. First, I lined up the paper to the existing tiles, then traced along the contoured edge. I cut out the pattern, laid it on top of my tile, and then used the X-Acto knife to freehand the scoring line. I later found out that my kitchen scissors had no trouble cutting through the vinyl. This would have been helpful to know for all those curves and contours. 
My biggest advice for this part of the project is to be patient. Take your time, be careful and do it right. Especially whenever you're cutting out patterns and contours on the tile, as this is precision work. It's tough to get the tiles perfectly lined up. I know I didn't, but it was neat enough that I'm happy with the result. The pattern on the tiles, the long line of planks, also helps trick the eye into seeing a continuous and unbroken line. After I'd placed down all the main tiles, there were a couple of gaps because my wall and door frame aren't completely straight. I filled in these gaps with leftover pieces of tile, trying to match the pattern as closely as possible. And there you have it, my completely replaced vinyl floor. I'm embarrassed to admit it, but we lived with the before version of this for about six months before I finally got the guts to tackle this project. I just knew the edges were going to be finicky, and they were. You can see here how the tile doesn't always meet the edge of the carpet, or how it's a little warped in some places. But overall it looks great, so much better than the previous version, and definitely better than the raw concrete and paper residue. And as with every project, it's a learning experience. So what did you guys think of this project? Is it something you would attempt in your own home? Let me know in the comments below. If you're new to my channel or aren't yet subscribed, hit the red button and click the bell to be notified when I post new content. I make other DIY tutorials like this video, as well as cooking, cleaning and organizing videos. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and that it inspired you to tackle your own projects. As always, thanks to everybody out there watching and supporting my channel, and cheers for now.